the topic is oncological emergencies what does oncological emergencies mean oncological emergencies are complications of cancer or side effects of treatment of cancer so it is potentially a serious and life threatening condition it can be classified into metabolic neurologic hematologic cardiovascular and infectious coming to metabolic it consists of acute tumor lysis syndrome hypercalcemia and hyponatremia siadhs syndrome of inappropriate anti diuretic hormone in neurologic it is malignant spinal cord compression increased intracranial pressure and pain hematologic consists of disseminated intravascular coagulation dic hyperleukocytosis and hyperviscosity due to dysproteinemia cardiovascular it involves superior vena cava syndrome malignant pericardial effusion in infectious it is neutropenic fever and septic shock we'll talk about the major ones first is superior vena cava syndrome superior vena cava is a vessel which brings deoxygenated blood from the head neck and thorax region means the chest region when there is any obstruction or compression of superior vena cava because of any tumor growth then it results in obstruction of the venous drainage from the head neck and thorax and this obstruction or tumor growth is mostly because of lung cancer or lymphoma and more specifically it is because of non small cell lung cancer about 50% another reasons for superior vena cava obstruction can be blood clot formation or aneurysm let's check what are the signs and symptoms of superior vena cava syndrome as we know that the venous drainage or the venous return from the head neck and the thorax region is hampered the blood the deoxygenated blood is not returning to the heart it can cause facial and periorbital edema means edema around the eyes and face another is stoke sign as there is no venous drainage from the neck region the neck can become swollen and this can lead to tightness of the shirt and blouse collar this is known as stoke sign then another one is edema of arms and hands then swelling of veins in the neck and chest region as we know that the superior vena cava is obstructed there is no venous return from the upper half of the body therefore the pressure inside the veins can be increased which can lead to distension of veins of the chest and neck region a rhythm of the upper body upper body can have discoloration because of this distended veins and epistaxis can occur because of high pressure in the veins nose leading can occur but these are not a life threatening condition because of collateral circulation collateral drainage of the blood from the head neck and thorax region but it can become life threatening if the tumor is not treated if the if the tumor is left untreated then it can cause airway obstruction by invading the trachea okay when the trachea is invaded means the tumor grows into the trachea then it can cause airway obstruction which can lead to cardiopulmonary or cardiorespiratory arrest and another one is hemorrhage then cyanosis as there is too much deoxygenated blood which is held back not coming to the atrium it can lead to cyanosis means decreased oxygen supply to the tissues then increased icp when there is obstruction in the vena cava the blood is not returning then it can cause increased pressure in the head therefore the intracranial pressure can be increased and this can lead to headache visual disturbances and altered mental status and when there is no or less 
venous return to the heart and it can lead to hypotension because of okay because of less cardiac output it can cause hypotension i hope it is clear to you why these signs and symptoms are occurring intervention we have to assess for early signs and symptoms of superior vena cava syndrome okay we have to give the patient semi fowler position because it will help the person or it will help in venous drainage from the upper half and also facilitate breathing administer corticosteroids as cancer can cause inflammation of the cells and tissues then we have to administer corticosteroids to decrease that inflammation another is diuretics we have to administer diuretics the diuretic it helps in decreasing the amount of fluid running in the vein or artery as the diuretic helps in getting rid of sodium and water the sodium takes with it water from the blood and ultimately decreasing the amount of fluid flowing through the veins helping in decreasing the pressure in the veins next is high dose radiation therapy and chemotherapy for the treatment of the tumor okay for removing the tumor and vena cava bypass surgery to make a bypass for returning the deoxygenated from the upper of the body to the heart and thrombolytic therapy if there is any clot formation then we have have to use thrombolytic treatment to break down that thrombus then we have to give breathing support to the patient as the patient is at high risk of cyanosis decreased oxygen in the tissues therefore we have to give oxygen to the patient and we have to monitor fluid volume level of the patient as well so the next one is the tumor lysis syndrome as the name suggests tumor lysis mean the breakdown of tumor when large quantities of tumor cells are destroyed rapidly then it leads to the release of its intracellular component into the blood stream and this release is faster than the body can eliminate and this causes electrolyte imbalances so or the tetrad of abnormalities are hyperkalemia hyperuricemia hypocalcemia and hyperphosphatemia so this is the entire pathophysiology of the tumor lysis syndrome when the tumor is broken or when it breaks down it releases its intracellular components like the dna or the nucleic acid phosphate lactic acid and potassium the dna which is composed of nucleic acid or the nucleotide mainly the purine and the pyrimidine and more specifically the purine the adenine and the guanine they so these purine the adenine and the guanine gets metabolized into hypoxanthin to xanthin and finally into uric acid high level of uric acid in the blood leads to hyperuricemia this uric acid is water insoluble and gets accumulated in the distal convoluted tubule in the kidney which leads to blocking and damaging of the kidney causing acute kidney injury next is the malignant cells of the tumor cells are high in phosphorus so the phosphate level is high in the tumor cell when it releases it in the blood it causes hyperphosphatemia this hyperphosphatemia ultimately leads to secondary hypocalcemia the phosphorus combines with the calcium in the blood it leads to formation of calcium phosphate and this calcium phosphate gets accumulated in the kidney causing kidney injury and when this gets accumulated in the heart it causes arrhythmias next is lactic acid this lactic acid overproduction can cause acidosis and when the potassium level is abnormally high it can lead to hyperkalemia and this hyperkalemia is a very life threatening condition it leads to cardiac dysrhythmias the ecg will show abnormalities okay so this is all about the pathophysiology and by this pathophysiology we'll able to learn about the signs and symptoms of the clinical manifestation of the tumor lysis syndrome hypocalcemia can cause nausea and vomiting muscular hyperactivation that is spasm tetany and seizures then prolongation of qt interval as it can lead to cardiac dysrhythmias and alteration of mental status hyperkalemia can lead to generalized fatigue 
and ECG abnormality is serious cardiac arrhythmias including cardiac arrest then hyperphosphatemia can lead cardiac rhythm disturbances hyperphosphatemia plus hyperuricemia can lead to acute kidney injury In next is intervention we have to ensure that the patient is hydrated properly before chemotherapy okay good hydration helps the patient to increase the urine volume level and ultimately it will eliminate the uric acid which will prevent kidney failure another thing is add sodium bicarbonate which helps to alkal alkalize urine and thereby prevent kidney failure secondary to uric acid accumulation next is diuretic therapy with carbonic anhydrase inhibitor or acetazolamide it also helps to alkalize urine and helps prevent kidney damage then administer sodium polystyrene sulfonate through the bowel the potassium is removed administer hypertonic dextrose with saline it also helps to shift the potassium into the cells administer aluminium hydroxide it also helps to remove excessive phosphate through bowel polystyrene is used to remove potassium this is also used to remove potassium and this is used to remove excessive phosphate hemodialysis is alternative treatment and another is assess urine ph to check whether the urine is getting alkalinized or not okay allopurinol helps in preventing the formation of uric acid ultimately preventing kidney injury i hope this is clear to you all spinal cord compression because of any tumor when the spinal cord is compressed okay when there is a tumor in the spinal cord it can cause the spinal cord to get compressed and another thing is when the vertebral column collapses from tumor entry means the spinal cord is protected by these bones the vertebra and if the vertebral column collapses because of any tumor in the vertebra or invading tumor then it can cause permanent neurological damage and resulting in mortality or death the signs and symptoms of spinal cord compressions are first is back pain initially the patient will experience pain in the back then it will lead to neurological deficit that is numbness and tingling of hands and fingers or legs and then if the end part of the spinal cord is compressed this can lead to corda equina syndrome and this can cause bowel and bladder dysfunction ultimately the patient will feel weak so these are the signs and symptoms of spinal cord compression i hope it is clear to you all this is intervention we have to recognize why the back pain is happening at early stage and we have to also identify the neurological deficit like numbness or tingling it can suggest that the patient is having cord compression then if there is a tumor if the tumor is identified then we have to give radiation and chemotherapy to the patient and as you know that the tumor can cause inflammation then we have to give corticosteroid therapy to reduce that inflammation and ultimately to remove that tumor we have to do the surgery we have to perform surgery so this one is the most important and life threatening condition okay hypercalcemia it is a last manifestation of extensive malignancy means when the tumor or the cancer has metastasized then hypercalcemia can be seen it is the release of calcium more than an amount which can be eliminated by the kidney this happens because of bone destruction by the cancer cells and demineralization various hormones like the parathyroid hormone and prostaglandins or osteoclast like substance can be released by the tumor and this can cause bone demineralization means the calcium is removed from the bone and it is passed on to the blood then it can lead to hypercalcemia or another reason can be excessive use of vitamins and minerals or another conditions like dehydration hyperparathyroidism renal impairment use of diuretics can also lead to hypercalcemia coming to the signs and symptoms the early signs include fatigue anorexia nausea vomiting constipation polyuria okay and the serious ones are severe muscle weakness because of hypercalcemia it can cause severe 
muscle weakness and then diminished deep tendon reflex deep tendon reflex like that of biceps triceps the patella and ankle brachioradialis these are the deep tendon reflexes these can be diminished okay means the reflexes will be minimal okay then paralytic ileus because of more calcium levels in the blood the nerves and the muscles of the intestine can be malfunctioning and this will lead to impaired digestive movement ultimately this will lead to intestinal blockage without any actual obstruction okay because this paralysis this paralysis hap is happening in the ileum or the intestine because of the malfunctioning of the nerves and the muscles then dehydration is another sign then change in the electrocardiogram hypercalcemia can also lead to change in ecg go through my previous videos in that i have told about the changes in ecg when there is electrolyte imbalances next is intervention monitor the serum calcium level and ecg okay we have to monitor the calcium level and the electrocardiogram and we have to administer fluid accordingly and uh, we have to use laxatives and stool softeners for treating the constipation we have to promote mobility as mobility prevents demineralization and growth breakdown of bone then we can administer medication to lower the calcium levels and we can prepare the client for dialysis so these are the interventions when a patient is having hypercalcemia and we have to, we have to do this rapidly to prevent death next is siadh which means syndrome of anti diuretic hormone the tumors can produce secrete and stimulate substances that mimics anti diuretic hormone i have told you earlier that diuretics help the kidney to get rid of sodium and water okay but the anti diuretic hormone prevents the water to leave the body and the tumors secrete so, so, such substances that acts as the anti diuretic hormone the signs and symptoms include weakness muscle cramp loss of appetite fatigue and the serum sodium level ranges from 115 to 120 mg equivalent per liter in this syndrome of inappropriate anti diuretic hormone the body tends to secrete and release vasopressin that is the anti diuretic hormone continuously without stopping okay because of which water retention takes place and because of water retention the sodium level is decreased in the body which leads to the normal serum sodium level is 135 to 145 mg equivalent per liter but because of water retention it tends to get lowered to 115 to 120 and this can cause muscle weak muscle cramps weakness loss of appetite fatigue and the uh, serious signs and symptoms related to water in intoxications are weight gain because of water retention weight gain can occur personality changes because of low sodium levels confusion and extreme muscle weakness can occur uh, serum sodium level approaches 110 mg equivalent per liter that is way less than what is normal it will cause seizures coma and eventually death will occur unless condition is treated rapidly so we have to keep in mind to monitor the serum sodium level okay and we have to ask the patient to prevent fluid you have to restrict fluid intake and increase sodium intake as the sodium level is decreasing right so we have to ask the patient to increase the sodium intake and as the water retention is taking place means the water is remaining in the body and not leaving the body because of which weight gain is occurring so we have to ask the patient to restrict the fluid intake we have to ask the patient to increase the sodium intake as the patient is suffering from hyponatremia that is the sodium level is decreased is less than normal therefore we have to ask the patient to increase the sodium intake we have to administer antagonist to diuretic hormone that is we have to administer potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone or something so that it will 
facilitate the removal of excessive water sodium etc and we have to also treat the underlying cause of cause with chemotherapy and radiation that is the tumor next is sepsis and disseminated intravascular coagulation okay dic is disseminated intravascular coagulation In the patient suffering from cancer are at risk for getting infection especially gram negative organism okay the gram negative organism can get into the bloodstream causing septicemia and sepsis and dic is a life threatening problem frequently associated with sepsis means when the septicemia takes place then the blood can coagulate on its own this is a life threatening problem okay which is associated with sepsis intervention is early identification we have to identify if the patient is having any kind of symptoms related to infection like fever body ache or something then strict aseptic technique must be maintained in doing invasive or procedures to the patient who is suffering from cancer and signs of bleeding and infection should be monitored okay and administer antibiotic intravenously to prevent and treat that bacterial infection if any then administer anticoagulants in early phase of dic okay the organisms can cause coagulation in the vascular system therefore we have to administer anticoagulant and we have to also or we can also administer cryoprecipitated clotting factors so these are all about the oncological emergencies i hope this is clear to you all okay now let's test your knowledge whether you have understood or not first question is the nurse is caring for a client with lung cancer and bone metastasis what signs and symptoms would the nurse recognize as indication of a possible oncological emergency select all that applies we have to first check the options okay the first is facial edema we have seen in one type of oncological emergency that facial edema is occurring okay weight loss of 9 kg in a month 9 kg in cancer patient 9 kg in a month is not a big deal okay it is normal serum calcium level of 12 mg per dl it is more than normal and another type of oncological emergency we have learned is hyper calcemia next is serum sodium level of 136 mg per dl normal is 135 to 145 so 136 is not a big deal it is normal then serum potassium level of 3.4 mg per dl normal level are 3.5 to 4.5 so 3.5 a slight serum potassium level decrease is not a big deal numbness and tingling of the lower extremity we have seen in cord compression that's spinal cord compression numbness and tingling takes place so lung cancer occurs in superior vena cava syndrome we have seen that lung cancer can cause uh, obstruction in the superior vena cava which can cause facial edema okay so this is the option one option one is selected then weight loss is not a big deal so this is not serum calcium level yes hypercalcemia is one of the factor so this one then three is also right and then sodium level is normal potassium level is not that valuable then numbness and tingling yes this is also an option so answer will be facial edema serum calcium level and numbness and tingling i hope this is clear to you next is question is a client with carcinoma of lung develops syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone as a complication of the cancer the nurse anticipate that the healthcare provider will request which prescriptions select all that applies so in siadh obviously it is a complication of cancer therefore to treat that cancer we'll ask the patient or the doctor will prescribe radiation and chemotherapy okay increase fluid intake in siadh already there is water retention so this is not correct we will not ask the patient to intake fluid decrease oral sodium intake no this is also incorrect because the sodium level is already very low so we have to ask the patient to increase the intake of sodium we have to determine the so serum sodium level this is correct because we have to monitor the sodium levels and medication that is antagonist to antidiuretic hormone obviously we will give the patient antagonist to antidiuretic hormone so that the excessive water is drained out of the body and 
so this is all that applies 1 2 5 and 6 i hope this is clear to you next is nurse is monitoring a client for signs and symptoms related to superior vena cava syndrome which is an early sign of this oncological emergency in superior vena cava syndrome what i have told you at first sinuses sinuses is seen but it is a serious sign but it is not an early sign arm edema it is also seen but it is not the earliest sign periorbital edema yeah first what happens we saw that the patient face is all swollen and the area around the eyes it was swollen so peri or vital edema will be the answer mental status changes will be far later okay the, this this and this will happen but it is not the early sign the early sign is the peri or vital edema i hope it is clear to you next is the nurse manager is teaching the nursing staff about signs and symptoms related to hypercalcemia in patient with metastatic prostate cancer and tells that the staff that which is a late sign or symptom of oncological emergency in hypercalcemia we have seen that the patient is having headache and dysphagia is not associated with hypercalcemia okay constipation is associated but it is not a late sign and symptom the late sign and symptom is the electrocardiographic changes in electrocardiogram what does we see we see that the st segment is shortened and there is widened t wave i hope this is clear to you all thank you for watching today's video if you liked it then please do subscribe my channel and share this video with your friends